Hi YouTube! So today I'm going to be covering the case of Paige Doherty. I think that's how you say it. Sorry if I pronounce any names wrong in this video. But Paige was a 15 year old girl from Scotland. Paige lived with her mom Pamela, her stepdad, a younger sister, and two younger brothers. She was very close to her mom. They were like best friends. Her mom was kind of young when she had Paige. So they were really close. They actually looked very similar as well. Um, the family was a really happy family, really normal. I mean, they argued here and there, just like any normal family, but they're typically very happy. The night before, March 19th, 2016, Paige stayed at a friend's house and in the morning she got ready to go to work. So she took her normal route to the bus station like she did every morning on her way to work. And when she was going to the bus station, she would pass like some food shops and she would always stop to get breakfast depending on what she wanted to eat would depend on what store she went into but her boyfriend dylan didn't get any like good morning texts from her or anything or any texts that let him know she was at work safely which was really strange because she always texted him in the morning so he thought this was really weird and he called Paige's mom pamela and seen if she had heard from her and she said that she hadn't which she did think was kind of strange but you know, she was a mom, she was just thinking maybe her phone died and she'll just talk to her later. So Dylan called her at work just to see if she had showed up safely and her job actually said that she had not shown up for work and that was kind of strange for her. She was never late and if she was gonna be late, she would always call in to let them know. So later that day on March 19th, nobody had heard from Paige, which was very strange. So they decided to call the police. I believe it was her mom who made a Facebook page to try and spread the word because social media does spread word very fast. So she made this Facebook account in hopes that somebody would find her daughter and contact her. So the police began to search for Paige and they went on the route that she would typically go to to work. So they stopped at the delis and they asked one shop um, if they had one of the owners of the shop if they had seen uh page and they said actually they have but she didn't go into their shop he just seen her walking by he waved she waved back and then he waved she waved back and then he actually went into a shop called the delicious deli which was john Lethem's shop police asked all of the shops if they had any footage to see where page may have gone into or what had happened only one of the shops had footage on the outside. All the other shops had footage on the inside, but they didn't have cameras on the outside except for one. They only took three hours of footage simply because if she was on her way to work, she's not going to be there for long. She's going to stop in to get breakfast and then be on her way. The police took the footage back to this station to look through it and everything, see maybe what could have happened, what she was wearing, everything like that. On March 21st, just two days after Paige had went missing, they received a phone call from a local dog walker and he reported that he had seen legs sticking out from a bush. The police arrived to the scene and they identified that it was a female body. They guarded off the whole area. The body was taken in to be identified and the family came in and they did say that it was Paige. They revealed her cause of death, which was blood loss from stab wounds. It had been said that she sustained up to 61 stab wounds and 150 injuries, but Pamela just really thought the media was trying to downplay how many injuries there were, and she definitely believes that there were close to 500. She says when she seen her body that there was a huge hole in her neck about the size of a fist and it was like half of her neck was missing they could also tell that there was more than one weapon that had been used there were obviously very serious injuries but there are also minor injuries like scratches from her trying to defend herself from the attacker there was a picture going around social media of a boy holding a knife with a red substance on it he facetimed his friend and claimed that he is the one who killed Paige. He also texted a bunch of girls, like very gruesome details of what he did. So police obviously looked into this, but it was eventually ruled out because it was basically just for attention. Later, the police went into the delicious deli um, owned by John Lethem. They showed him pictures of Paige and asked if he had seen her. And he said, 
He sees a lot of people every day. He can't keep track of them. And all of a sudden, after questioning, he remembers that Paige did come into a shop and she got a roll. She was as normal as ever and she was on her way and that was the last time that Paige was ever seen. So after questioning John, the police assumed that something had happened to Paige between the bus stop and John's deli. And there was obviously no way of knowing if Paige did get on the bus to start her route to work because buses, you just get on them. They don't take your name, nothing like that. And it was also believed that she didn't get on the bus just because her body was found half a mile away. So if she were to get on the bus and go all the way to where her job was, it just didn't make sense for her to be all the way back to where she started basically. So when the police actually started looking more into the footage that they got from the shops, they seen Paige on March 19th at 8.21 a.m. walk into John's Deli. So they kept watching the footage to see which way Paige had left from the deli or if she was actually going to get on the bus, but she never ended up leaving. And like I said previously, this was three hours worth of footage so they just really didn't think that she'd be in there for three hours if she had somewhere to be. Sorry if the angle looks a little different or anything, I just had to leave and go get my brother from school. So if anything looks different, that's why. The footage that they looked at earlier, it is on a 12 day loop. So after 12 days, it'll delete and start all over again. So they did go back and ask for the 12 day footage just in case she really was in there for three hours. When they went back to go get the 12 day footage, they also asked John for footage of the inside of his shop and he willingly easily gave it to them. But when they reviewed the footage from inside of John's deli, it showed that Paige was never even in the shop, which we know isn't right because from the footage from the outside, it showed her going into his deli. I don't think he ever gave a reason as to why half of the footage was missing from his shop. But when they continued to review the 12 day footage at around 10 a.m., which was about two hours after Paige went into the shop, they seen some really weird behavior from John. He ran out of his shop into another shop, bought some things, and then ran back into his. And there were people around him, and the witnesses say that the gates to his shop were actually down. So he closed his shop to go get something from another store and come back, and he never opened it back up. just really weird because he was running back and forth and this the shop was closed so it's not like anybody was gonna go in there so he could have easily taken his time to go to the other shop to buy what he needed so at around 10 3 a.m there is footage of john going to the trunk of his car and clearing a space and then going back into the shop and there is also police footage that hasn't been released to the media but it is said that john brought a huge garbage bag out and almost hit somebody with it while he was on the way to his car and just put it in the trunk of his car. And then at 11.59, it shows John getting into his car and pulling off. And keep in mind when John is getting in his car, Paige was still never seen leaving the shop and his shop was closed at this time. And it was all just really confusing and suspicious because he closed his shop and made it look like he was just taking out the garbage. But like, all shops have people who do that for you. You don't have to take out the garbage on your own. So why did he put it in his car, close his shop, to and leave? It just doesn't make any sense. So oh, the police obviously started to assume the worst and they just thought that this is where Paige was killed since it's the last place that she was ever seen. On March 24th, John Lethem was arrested under the suspicion of the murder of Paige Doherty. And this part was just kind of really weird to me and very coincidental, but he was married and had two kids and one of them was a baby to the woman he was married to and the second child was nine years old and her name was Paige. Prior to this, he was also on the news talking about how he would hate for anything like this to happen to his daughter. He was on Facebook sharing posts, trying to support the family. He even told the mom she could come to his house to speak, something like that, because he was the last person who seen her. It was all really weird. And the mom claims that she honestly thinks that he thought 
maybe she suspected him and was gonna do the same thing to her. So for a while, John was sticking to his story that Paige just came in, bought a roll, and left, even though the CCTV footage obviously shows that she never left. So previously, we seen John run into a shop, buy some things, and then run back into his shop. And the owner of the shop that he bought some things in was questioned about what John bought. He told them that John bought some garbage bags, some bleach, and some antibacterial wipes, which is obviously very suspicious. Two days after John's arrest, he went to a private court hearing and he didn't take any plea. He didn't say if he was guilty or not guilty. Then on September 5th, 2016, which was about six months after all of this had happened, John pled guilty to the murder of Paige Doherty. So now we're going to get into what John says happened that morning. So he basically switches his whole story and says that morning she came in, she ordered a roll and while he was making it, she asked about a job there. She said she wanted to get a new job and she asked if she could get one there. So he said she could come into the back and fill an application and when she was filling it out, she put that she was 15 and he said, oh, you're 15, I can't get you a job here. And he claims that Paige snapped back and said, if you don't give me a job here, I'm gonna go to the police and lie and say that you touched me. And John Lethem has a twin brother who is on the sex offender registry for raping a woman. And this ruined his twin brother's life. You know, he, it was hard for him to get jobs. Every time he did get a job, he was fired when they found out. So John, just says he thought this could not happen, she could not ruin his life, and he grabbed a knife and stabbed her. Basically, nobody believed his side of the story because her family says she would never snap back like that, and her mom says she would never ask for a job there. She, was, she had a job as a hairdresser, which is what she wanted her career to be in. Why would she leave that job to go to a deli? It just doesn't make any sense. So what a lot of people think, especially her mother, they think that he was trying to do something sexual to her and Paige was just not for that. She would have been disgusted and she probably tried to get away or push him off and he just got really mad and probably didn't want her to go tell anybody and he just lashed out. So because John pled guilty to the murder of Paige, there was a trial set in October where he would be sentenced. On October 12th, John was sentenced to life in prison with a minimum of 27 years. But get this, just two months after John's sentencing, he appealed for his sentence to be renewed because he thought it was just too excessive. Are you serious? Are you serious? But, but the court agreed to this and changed his sentence to life and minimum of 23 years. So he got four years knocked off. That is just really disappointing and crazy. But in May of 2017, Pamela Page's mother had a daughter and she named her after Page and her name was Penny Margaret Page. And a really nice thing that the family does is on holidays like Christmas and her birthday, the family would still get Page presents and they would donate it to charity. So that is the end of this video. Um, if I missed out on any information, please comment down below if you guys want to see more videos like this. Give it a thumbs up, comment which case you would like me to cover. This is my first video, so sorry if it wasn't that great. Um, I try to do and get as much research as I could, but like I said, um, if I missed out on anything, please just comment down below. So, yeah, thank you guys for watching. Um... Subscribe to my channel, please. See you on my next video.